What's up everybody, this is the Axe Man here, and today I want to talk about Halo yes. Infinite. You know, mix things up a little. I've told you what I love about the multiplayer, what I dislike about it, but what can we do now as a community of giant nerds besides wait for the next update? What, ask the magic conch for ideas? That's not gonna do a damn thing. I've been researching this radical new concept called being productive? And I think it'd be fun to give that a try. You know, come up with a real game plan. What I think 343 should do to evolve and improve Infinite's multiplayer. How I would fix Halo Infinite. Side note, that new campaign though. <laughs> I want to say big congratulations to 343 for launching Infinite and making it to the finish line with the campaign. Wishing you guys all the best, celebrate your success, take time off for the holidays after your small patch on December 14th and we'll see you all in 2022. If you're wondering the status of my campaign review, I'll be working on that once I get back from Rally. It's a HCS event going on in North Carolina. I'll be there from the 16th to the 20th if you're there too. Don't be shy, come say hi. If everything goes according to plan, my review will be up before 2022. But let's not dive too deep into Zeta Halo. Let's get back to multiplayer. What I propose will probably make everyone happy and quell some of the outrage that's gotten out of control. And yes, I make this video with complete self-awareness that I don't make video games and have no idea how to do so. But I think I have good ideas. <laughs> and I excel at knowing what people love about Halo, what would build passion and hype, and putting all that into words. So here's my simple four-step program. 343 needs to make sprint five times faster, bring back armor lock and make loadouts a core component of multiplayer, nerf the plasma pistol and take out vehicles entirely. Leave your thoughts in the comments below and please don't, don't unsubscribe. But before we jump into it, this video is- ah! Ladies and gentlemen, the Act Man has been slain. And none of this would have happened if he had his Raycon Everyday Earbuds in. Would you expect such amazing sound quality in these earbuds that go for half the price of other premium brands? I think not. I take my Raycons with me pretty much everywhere I go. On runs, romantic walks on the beach, scenic strolls through Zeta Halo. They're portable, come with eight hours of playtime, and a charging unit with enough juice for 32 hours. And with free shipping and free returns, they make for a very convenient gift this holiday season. With five stylish colors to choose from, and different earbud sizes they make for the perfect gift for anyone on your list. And that's why I'm putting on my Christmas hat and giving you all 15% off everything on their site. But you have to use the link in the description and the pinned comment, buyraycon.com slash actman. And when you check out, use the code word HOLIDAY. Don't forget and redeem that sweet, sweet discount. Thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. You know, I totally understand people's gripes and complaints with the game, and I agree with most of them. As someone who's been highly critical of this franchise, though, even for some of the shit that I was seeing on r slash Halo, I was like, dude, I understand your frustration, but for the love of Keith David, can you tone it back? Can you do that for Arbiter? Can you just... Pull it back a bit. So let's avoid toxicity and simply indulge in this fantasy roadmap. I'll try not to focus so much on the current negatives in the game, rather the positives that certain changes will have. I think Captain Hindsight's time in the spotlight is over, saying stuff like, well, you should have done this, well, you should have done that. It's like, yeah, okay, maybe you're not wrong, but what does that do for us now? All right, so here's my step-by-step -step game plan in order of what I think is the biggest priority and most feasible. The first thing that would do the community a lot of good is come up with a roadmap. Halo has so many freaking sub-communities, it's both a blessing and a curse. Its diverse offerings is what garnered such a large audience in the first place. But it also has the curse of living up to all of those different expectations. If Halo never had Forge, Firefight, Playable, Elites, etc., we wouldn't be upset that they're not an infinite because it wouldn't be an expectation. A lot of fans are kind of sitting around twiddling their thumbs, 
waiting for news on when their favorite thing is going to be added. Some people have stopped playing altogether because they don't have that thing they play Halo for. A roadmap for future updates would give us all something to look forward to, be excited about. Don't let the hype die with this game. Keep momentum moving forward, 343. You guys have been mostly transparent and the recent update on Reddit by Sketch is a good first move. For those unaware, we'll be getting Fiesta, Free For All, SWAT, and Slayer playlists on the 14th. Thank the profits, we did it. We shouldn't have had to do it, but we did it. Thing is, we know Campaign Co-op and Forge are coming in six and nine months respectively. We know they want to revamp the progression and battle pass, but beyond that, just dust and echoes. 343 could earn a shitload of brownie points with me especially if they just came out and said something like, Yeah, we know King of the Hill is awesome. That's a fan favorite mode. We love it too. And want to bring it back. Although we don't have a specific timeline yet, rest assured, this is one of our goals. Some statement like that and just substitute King of the Hill for infection, invasion, VIP territories, custom browser, any any piece of content. Let fans know you haven't forgotten about all these different things. Despite its flaws, Halo 5 came out with a roadmap, I think four months after launch, which was a long time, but it had some pretty solid updates every month. Halo 5 did a great job hyping up this new content and creating cool themes around them. I want that same hype for Infinite. And 343 stayed true to pretty much every promise they made in that initial roadmap. Unlike Cyberpunk, you fucking scam artist, CD Projekt Red, I'm still pissed. Of course, certain things should be kept secret. You know, you don't want to play your entire hand, but just give us enough to keep people willing to wait. The next priority is already being addressed. Expand on the modes and playlists. This is probably the biggest factor that discourages people from playing more. I know it is for me. Halo is at its best when you feel like you can play it exactly the way you want to. So the lack of launch content was very apparent to everyone, which makes it all the more bizarre that plenty of additional modes are already completely working and functional if you play an offline. You can check out multiple SWAT and Fiesta variants, Attrition, Neutral Flag. I tested these out, they're loads of fun. I don't quite understand why they're not playable in matchmaking and weren't available at launch. MCC, to put it lightly, launched about as well as the Space Shuttle Challenger. However, through updates, it is now the dream Halo game I always wanted it to be. The playlist selection is perfect. Titanfall 2 and even Call of Duty have figured this out. You have all the freedom you need. I can queue up for multiple things at once and be surprised by what I get with the knowledge that I don't have to play Slayer if I don't want to. 343 doesn't need to worry about playlist population. This is the first new FPS Halo in six years. It's cross-platform, it's free to play, it's doing really well. Like, MCC is doing just fine, is it not? And that's been out for eight years. If you're worried about too long queue times, look, I'll be okay if it takes an extra 10 to 30 seconds to find a match. I promise I won't have a mental breakdown and try to purge all life in the galaxy. Maybe. Ideally, Infinite would simply have copied MCC's current system, but right now, that's a long-term goal. You'd have to revamp everything, so for now, these are the playlists I would want to see within the next few months. Quick Play, as a general, I'm down to play everything besides BTB and Ranked. Team Slayer, Free For All, with Objectives. Team Objective, Team Doubles, SWAT, Team Snipers, with Variants. Action Sack, Wacky Custom Games. Big Team Battle, with Heavies. And one rotating or special playlist that comes around one week out of the month. For social gameplay, these playlists cover a lot of territory, and I think most fans would be thrilled to see this type of content in Infinite. If there's one or two modes I want to see added, it's King of the Hill and Crazy King. I think that shit would be so fucking intense on BTB. For ranked playlists, I think all you need at the moment is Ranked Slayer, Team Tactical, Team Doubles, and Lone Wolves. The bottom line, Infinite is really fun, and we all just want more ways to enjoy it. More content is great, but in this era of modern gaming, sometimes you need a little more than that. Which is why 343 needs to... 3. 
tweak the progression, battle pass customization, and monetization. I ask you, what's better than playing a game you love? Sex? Pfft, get out of here. No, feeling rewarded for that time you invested and being able to show it off. Halo has never relied on progression as a crutch. That said, having a kick-ass progression system would only do good for this game. The battle pass is not enough. I want to see a full-fledged Reach-style military rank separate leveling system, or even what Halo 5 had where it's just numbers, man. Something that displays how much time people have played because the battle pass doesn't do that. Okay, I'll be Captain Hindsight for 15 seconds. I personally would not have designed a system entirely around challenges and then introduce an item to circumvent challenges you don't want. 343 have already improved the XP gains for playing matches, a great first step, but winning the match needs to be the best incentive. It needs to give the best reward. Because right now people are encouraged to do anything but that and fucking wait for vehicles and weapons to spawn and not play the objective and they quit out if they don't get the mode that they need. In addition to per match XP, I'd add a nice bonus for players that win, with no cap on the day. Altogether, progressing in the battle pass is unintuitive, unrewarding, and creates unhealthy play styles. The problems with it are so complex and intertwined that it'll need to be overhauled in future passes, if not this one. You know, Reach offered XP on top of individual performance and a bit of luck. I think a similar system would be ideal. But none of this really matters if the rewards don't trigger that intense dopamine reaction. The goal is to encourage people to buy the battle pass, extra cosmetics, and in turn feel compelled to play the game longer, right? Rise and grind, right? That's the business model. But a lot of the tiers are just not exciting. Whoopee! Another double XP boost and 27 challenge swaps? I don't think anyone is even mildly excited when they get a double XP token or a challenge swap. Yet for some reason these constitute the majority of the rewards. Every other battle pass I've seen offers some type of in-game currency as a reward so eventually you can buy some of the shit you want to or use it to skip tiers. Halo needs to do that too. And I'm totally fine with unlocking stuff that used to be given to us in previous games. If it's cool and awesome, the Johnson emblem, they have a Johnson, e they have a Johnson emblem, name plates, armor coatings. I'm fine with unlocking stuff as long as it's cool and it feels rewarding. You know, unlocking an emblem should not be done in pieces where you have to unlock it in three separate tiers, one for vehicles, one for weapons and your Spartan. That's just padding. Please don't do that in the future. I also think all of the reach related customization should be in the battle pass and not the store because the season is called Heroes of Reach. Sorry, trying not to be super negative, but you know when scrolling through the Mark 7 armor, more than half of the options in there either say available in the store or more details coming. You know, what the fuck is that all about? It's so off-putting to scroll through the Yo Roy core and see like almost nothing that you can customize or swap or change with it. In the future, I would sell off-brand stuff like the pineapple grenade chest piece in the store. That's totally fine, but keep the traditional Halo stuff all in the battle pass. I also think there should be dope exclusive stuff to unlock by tough challenges or Long-term goals, play 500 matches, get recon or EOD or something. If customization is how you're gonna make money, you need to offer a lot of that. And it needs to be kick-ass. There's so many dope ways Halo could monetize itself that I'm honestly shocked they haven't. A Sergeant Johnson AI, hello? David Scully, bring him back? Pre-order your copy of Halo 3 ODST at participating retailers now, and you'll get all the confidence you need. Me! Tartarus AI, Eshram, Cortana, you know, Reach had the firefight voices, Halo 5 had the voice pack for 15 bucks or whatever. Do that shit, do it! You generate so much hype and money, man. I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, the HCS skins are a perfect example. It's like, they look cool, you can represent your favorite team, but why can't we use that skin on everything else? 
Why are players locked into looking exactly like this if they want to use this armor coating? I think six months is a long time for just 100 tiers, so maybe after three months, 343 can add in 50 additional tiers. I think that would be great. I don't know. Maybe people would be upset about that. But by making the battle pass something that players are excited to grind for, it'll improve player retention and fan attitudes towards the monetization. And by making each tier unlock feel meaningful, you tap into that addicting aspect without coming off as too greedy. It's a delicate balance, but I think 343 can figure it out. Once you've improved the battle pass and progression, 343 will also want to number four, tear down the barriers, enhance customization, and adjust the prices. Some of the stuff in the store is ridiculously expensive, even by free-to-play standards. 10 bucks for a weapon charm and a couple of skins? You can't charge people $5 for the color blue and expect them to be hyped. Infinite's monetization is a byproduct of it being free-to-play, but that doesn't mean we have to accept the shitty aspects of it. The big problem is I want to spend more money but the systems they have in place actively discourage me from doing that. I want it. I want to give you money. Let me give you money. The pineapple grenades, for an example. Pretty cool chess piece. After buying it, I was somewhat disappointed that it didn't change my frags into pineapples. But even worse, the armor cores separate the customization into arbitrary groups. Your creativity in expressing yourself through your Spartan is restricted for no other reason I can think of than somebody at 343 or Microsoft thought this would be more profitable. I didn't go to business school, but even I could tell you, people don't want to pay for something if they're told exactly how and when they can use it. Like, I had buyer's remorse after I bought the pineapple grenades because it's only compatible with the Mark 7 armor core. While the Mark 7 armor core doesn't have half of its shit available to unlock in the battle pass, so I'm not gonna use it. So, I just wasted my money. If I unlock something, or pay for something, just let me use it. Nobody wants to keep track of which armor pieces are compatible with which armor core, and can you use this kit and change this thing or this armor coating? If 343 is truly focused on player freedom, then ditching the restrictions of the armor cores is essential. Especially since their own bots are able to bypass that. I think sales would actually improve because we would have more versatility. You know, the art style is fantastic and I want to be hyped about updating my look. But the reality is the customization feels so restrictive that even at tier 39, I barely feel like I have any options to work with. Revamping the battle pass and customization might take a while. So in the meantime... I think 343 should. Number five, bring the balance updates we all want to see. Add in new weapons, vehicles, and maps. Core gameplay is extremely fun, not without its frustrating elements, vehicle health, of course. And the dynamic vehicle spawns are cool being dropped in by a pelican, but they're too infrequent and unbalanced. I think a traditional game mode where they just have set spawns would be good for BTB, like BTB classic. I would also up the spawns in like new BTB with the Pelican vehicle drops. If one side gets a Wraith, the other side should too. It just makes the game more fun and balanced. Everything else I think should be adjusted, buffed, or nerfed. I talked about in my previous video, so I won't reiterate it all. Also, big thanks to GameCheat13 and his Alpha Archive channel. Please subscribe to both of those. He's posting a lot of really cool cut Halo Infinite content. And it got me thinking, there's so much cool shit they didn't finish that I would love to see. Look at this skiff vehicle. It's not even textured, but oh my god, it's like the older brother to the Spectre. Please, 343, bring the skiff into Infinite. Game Sheets posted clips of the Spiker, the Fuel Rod Gun, a new vehicle called the Cougar, classic pump action shotgun. While it's incomplete, I think we'd all be really excited to see some of this stuff fully realized in the game. Halo 5 was always adding new weapons, vehicles, and maps consistently, and honestly kept the game fresh for a long time, even if I didn't like the core gameplay as much. I think 343 should remember what they did well with Guardians and apply the same ideas to Infinite. I really hope 343 doesn't wait six months until the end of the Heroes of Reach season to add substantial updates. 
And that is why they should also add a new map every couple of months. I don't think that's a big ask. Without Forge, we've only got these 10 maps to work with and we need more. I want more. And I know I should. Not to mention all the weapon variants found in the campaign are just not in customs or multiplayer. You know, you already have the content made, just implement it, man. Were it so easy. As all that is going on, someone at 343 needs to take a long, hard look at custom games and improve them. Encourage people to play them. Right now, they're neutered like a eunuch. I get it though, private matches of Infinite don't encourage people to buy tiers in the battle pass or spend money in the store. But I think this is such a severely underrated part of all the crazy promotion Halo has gotten over the years. Like, you remember those old Achievement Hunter videos? The customs browser? I mean, if I show you gameplay of Trash Compactor in Halo 3, for the first time you're like, that's awesome! You know what I mean? Like, you would want to play that. Yes, 343 did launch custom games in a mostly broken state, so they need to fix it ASAP. Let me save my custom modes and let me share them, at the very least, without crashing the game. Right now, not many people are making custom game content, and it's because they simply don't have the tools for it. There's also a lot of room to improve the options players have, like random weapon spawns, equipment spawns, yada yada. Please do not forget about customs, they serve as the perfect break from regular matchmaking. Which brings me to my next point, number seven, flesh out social features. Introduce stats and a service record. One of the series' greatest strengths is how easy it is to share the awesomeness with your friends. Whether it's through the file share, through looking at the top rated clips and videos, screenshots. Halo is a social game, and it's unfortunate that Infinite does not really have many social features. Give us pre-game and post-game lobbies to interact with people. It's a great way to make friends. Or enemies. This community, for the most part, is awesome. Give us a space to interact with each other without severing that connection every 10 minutes. I've run into cool people that recognized me and we were talking and then the game ended and I was like, Oh shit, I forgot. We're about to leave. And then we got booted back to the lobby and I forgot what their gamer tag was. So I'm not 100% sure, but is there no all chat in the game either? Bring that back too. I don't know why shooters started distancing themselves from pre-game and post-game lobbies. Even if there was trash talk, who cares, man? Just mute him. You know, listening to some half-wit talk smack on Xbox Live only encouraged me more to want to whoop his ass. And that's the thing, in Reach you could scroll through the pre-game menu and look at players' armor, their service record, do, do they have a cool mode saved in their file share? Every time you ran into someone else, there was an ability to interact with them and like share clips, ideas, modes, and features. It just created this robust community, and Infinite should really emphasize that too, if this is to be the next 10 years of Halo. The beauty of a service record too, is it serves as a permanent record to other players of your accomplishments. I mean, who doesn't want that? How many kills, how much time played, how many matches played, your ranking in ranked modes. Again, look at MCC. It tracks literally every stat you could possibly think of, including all the medals you've ever achieved. Kills, deaths, assists, favorite weapon, favorite vehicle. It just adds personality to the game. Bragging rights. Let me click on a, another player's profile and see what type of armor cores he has set up. There's so much room for improvement. Number eight is improve anti-cheat measures and the theater. If you use cheats or hack in online games, I do think you deserve to be thrown into a volcano. It was inevitable that cheaters would invade the free-to-play infinite. Honestly, I can't say I've encountered many of them, but I know some people have. Since the theater mode just isn't working, it's really hard to go back and identify them. At least it's not 2042 where you don't have a fucking scoreboard to see if someone's 120 and zero. I think more should be done to identify these cheaters so we can use the target locator on their place of residence. Use whatever power Microsoft has. Exploit it. Fuck these people that ruin online games and other things for everyone. No mercy. It's a good sign that 343 is adding Fiesta as a permanent permanent playlist, as I'm sure they plan to only bring it back for the Fracture Tenrai event. 
And when they removed Fiesta, it pissed a lot of people off because there wasn't much content in the game to begin with. I think this is a clear sign that 343 needs to, number nine, rethink events moving forward. You know, it was pretty cool. Like the, the Fracture Tenrai event was kind of cool to see new cosmetics and unlocks, a separate battle pass. Limited time events should offer new modes, new experiences we haven't had before. Not just rely on old stuff we all expect to be in the game already. It just builds more excitement that way. You know, some type of ninja themed grab bag of custom games would have been fucking awesome. If events are more unique and new, it'll maintain a lot of hype and momentum for Infinite. And finally, Number 10, long-term goals. Campaign co-op, forge, matchmaking overhaul. I don't expect everything I just talked about to be totally perfect and fixed by the time Heroes of Reach ends, but ideally all these major changes will be worked on in some capacity between now and the release of Forge. When you do release Forge 343, you will have given your community the tools to create endless amounts of content for you. So please bring a customs browser with it and make bookmarking work as intended. I honestly can't wait to see what the future holds for Infinite. And although there is much work to still be done, I think 343 is well up to the task. But what do you think? What would you like to see in Halo Infinite's multiplayer moving forward? Let me know in the comments below. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace. Listen up, Spartans. It's Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Sierra 117. Subscribe to the Ackman for awesome content and finish the fight. Master Chief, out.